I'm building a 112 scale miniature house and I'm going to show you how I made this look like this. So stick around. This is the 112 scale diorama miniature house that I'm building and this is the wall that I'll be filling and sanding and painting. This is a picture of what the miniature Sears kit house will look like when it's finished. And this is the wall I'm going to be working on. So let's get started. I'll be explaining what these numbers on the sandpaper means later on. I'm filling the joints in the wall and I'm using some spackle or just basic wood filler for this task. I'm applying it as if I were icing a cake and using one of my popsicle sticks. You can use a plastic putty knife but this works just as well. Fill the gaps but try not to leave excess filler on the project. This excess filler will have to be sanded off later when the filler is completely dried. You want to try and squeeze the spackle in between the cracks. You need to make sure all the wall filler or wood filler or whatever you're using is completely dry before you start sanding it. Sandpaper is believed to have been invented in the 13th century in China. They used crushed shells or sand and it was glued to parchment paper. In the 1800s a similar product called glass paper was made using crushed glass instead of sand. Generally glass is no longer used as an abrasive. Flint was also used at one time. Garnet is commonly used for sandpaper for today's woodworking and emery for metals and diamond for finishing and polishing hard metals, ceramics and even glass. Sandpaper generally has a number associated with it such as 60 grit, 80 grit, 120 grit grit and so on. The grit size refers to the size of the particles or abrasive materials embedded in sandpaper. These measurements will indicate how much abrasive material can fit in one square inch. There are several standards that have been established which determine the number shown on the sandpaper. These standards establish the average grit size and the two most common are the United States standard which is the CAMI standard or Coded Abrasive Manufacturers Institute and the European standard the FEP or Federation of European Products Abrasives. The number of the grit is a rating of the size of the abrasive particles embedded on the sandpaper. The higher the grit number, the finer the abrasive particles are and the smoother the finish will be. The lower the grit number, the more coarse the finish will be and the quicker the material is removed when sanding. Usually you start with a coarser sandpaper and work your way up to a finer sandpaper when you're woodworking. So in summary, the higher the number of grit, the finer the abrasive and the the finer the abrasive, the smoother the surface will be when you use it. In this case, we're just removing some wall filler, so we'll use a finer sandpaper to start with because the wall filler is fairly soft and easy to remove. As I mentioned, the abrasives are made of various types of material, such as garnet, which is commonly used in woodworking, and emery, which is commonly used to polish metals. Diamond is used for finishing and polishing harder materials, such as ceramics and glass. This is the Waterford Crystal Factory in Ireland. You see the glassmakers blowing the glass and here we see one of the glass makers using an abrasive wheel to polish the glass. I'm going to be using a sanding sponge with a 180 grit. This is a fairly fine sandpaper which will work fairly fine to remove and smooth the wall filler that I've used on the miniature model house. Sanding can be a tedious task when building your miniature model house. Sometimes it takes two or even three passes to get your surface smooth and make the joints blend together seamlessly. What you want to do is sand it smooth then paint it. See how it looks and then refill those areas that you're not happy with and re-sand them again and paint it again. In my case this wall took three tries to get it the way I wanted it. I filled the wall the first time, painted it, then sanded it again and repainted it and finally after the third pass I felt I had the wall as smooth as I could get it. Applying wood siding made from popsicle sticks is difficult because the popsicle sticks aren't always even and straight but overall I think it came out looking pretty good. Before you paint make sure you thoroughly clean the surface. You don't want any of the wood filler powder left on your project before you start painting. These particles could cause roughness on your project or make it difficult for the paint to stick to the wood. I'm using my shop vac to clean the area and wiping it with a clean dry cloth before painting. Hey, if you're enjoying my video, please hit the like button. As a YouTuber, it really helps me out. And if you're enjoying my videos, maybe even consider subscribing to my channel. That'd be awesome. I'm using some water-based latex paint. I'm using a sample container of paint. It's cheaper to buy your paint this way. I'll leave a link in the description for my painting tips and tricks. You can check it out later.
Use a light coat of paint. It's better to put two light coats on your project than one really thick coat. A thick coat of paint will cover up some of the details in your project, such as the details in the molding on your door and window frames. Here on the front of the house you can see where I've painted the wall and then filled it again. These areas aren't completely smooth so I re-sanded them again and applied another coat of paint. I'm adding a bit of extra paint along the base of the house. The black is where the front porch will be. And there you have it, and most of the joints are no longer visible. Hey, why don't you check out this video on my painting tips and tricks. We'll see you in the next video.